Hello, welcome to another episode of Savage in the Wild. We are here in the Great Smoky Mountains. Absolutely one of the most incredible places I have ever been. I'm Isla Hatter and I'm a wild crafter and a wild foods enthusiast and all those names that you want to call it. I've been foraging and uh, cooking wild food since I was a little girl with my family and one of my first memories as a child was standing on the hood of the car and reaching up to pick what we call Mustang grapes which was some variety of muscadine but back where I grew up we called them Mustang because they were the, the wild things. The word Uganos in Cherokee means sweet mm -hmm. and the sweet greens in the springtime are basically uh, the fresh greens because that tastes so good that mm -hmm. you had all these uh, dried things for the winter. Each family has their own Uganos recipe and that's a collection of things like the toothwort and maybe the sochan and um, corn salad maybe and uh, which is valerianella. Um, the first one I was shown that was Uganos was Solomon seal and when it before it unfurls that was one that they said tasted really good and mm -hmm. would be part of a family's combination for their mm -hmm. spring Uganos. And there's the, the tooth's root, Dentaria oh, diphyla. Yeah. And it'll put on those little uh, shoots like a new part of the root that looks like a tooth's root. Oh, and cool. it's, it's the leaf, it's three leaved. But when you learn it really well, it is different from poison ivy. It's got scalloped mm -hmm. edges and white veins. Sometimes it's a little purple on the back side when it's young. This one isn't. But this has a, a horseradish flavor to it, milder huh. than the regular horseradish. Uh -huh. And I've been known to go hiking with a roast beef sandwich. Oh, yeah. And this would be my lettuce. I'll look for a stream <laughs> and find tooth wart, and I'll have my condiment and uh -huh. my lettuce at the same time. It's tall green coneflower, Redbeckia laciniata. And it has a um, tall stalk with a sunflower-like flower at the uh, midsummer with a green center instead of a brown one, uh -huh. like most uh, sunflowers do. Uh -huh. So if you see that along the stream bank, then you want to mark it and go back later in early spring like this, then you would be collecting these leaves. And So are those too large to eat? No. Um, sometimes they'll get them a little younger than that, but you'll get... No bigger than this. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'd want to get the. You could cut it down. It'll come back and get the young leaves. So, mm -hmm. and does it have to be size. cooked, or is it? It has to be cooked. Mm -hmm. It's uh, usually parboiled. Can't really say what sochin mm -hmm. tastes like because uh -huh. it's like nothing you've ever had before. It has its own unique flavor. You cook it. It's delicious. Cool. It really is good. It's something that I have really learned to like. People encourage these to grow along the riverbank, but mm -hmm. they're quite plentiful and have been a. Mm -hmm. traditional grain for generations in the mountains. Mm -hmm. That's called corn salad corn or salad. Valeria ella. Valerianella. Valerianella. Mm -hmm. And when do you eat it? Uh, really before it flowers, but you can get it now. Uh-huh. And you can eat it and it's been rained on, so mm. it's tasty. Yeah. You can have it fresh in the salad. That's how I like it, it's fresh. And when it's blooming, I just take the flowers and the leaves and just cut it all up. And oh, that is nice. Mix it in the salad. It's just a nice fresh taste. So sweet. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be collecting uh, plants for food or mm -hmm. medicine, I have um, a, a rule for responsible foraging and mm -hmm. that's, that's identification, location, and multiplication. Mm -hmm. Identification, be absolutely certain of what you have put on your, that you're about to put on your skin or to ingest. Mm -hmm. Positive of your identification before you do that. Second is location. To be sure that the area that you're collecting in is free of pesticides, herbicides, and it's, and it's legal also. Mm -hmm. You need to check the legalities of the area where you are or ask permission of a, a farmer to collect things out of his uh, mm -hmm. cornfield. Mm -hmm. Usually they're delighted to have you come uh, <laughs> weed <laughs> anything, you know, for them that's weeds, but for us yeah. it's food. So the location is second. And then third is your um, multiplication, which mm -hmm. is important to assure that that species will continue to survive so that you'll have some next year for one thing. Mm -hmm. And the uh, most native peoples would say that you can collect the fourth plant. The first one 
um, you want to let go to seed and the second one maybe an insect a monarch butterfly or something needs it for, mm -hmm. for their survival and third someone else may also be needing it as they come along worse mm -hmm. than you do mm -hmm. and then fourth you can collect for yourself mm -hmm. so identification location and multiplication is a really good one. Mm -hmm. But don't be afraid to try it. There's a lot of things that we have as vegetables that mm -hmm. we know which part to eat and what part we don't. Mm -hmm. Like the nightshade family. We mm -hmm. don't eat the leaves of the potato or the tomato. Mm -hmm. And so it's perfectly safe to teach this to children. Mm -hmm. They can learn it very easily. Mm -hmm. And there's, like I said, there's some really good eating out there. They yeah. call me the gourmet grazer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're collecting for medicine, you need to have great respect for what you're doing besides the rules of foraging. But you need to ask the, the, the plant and the, and the tree for the bark or whatnot. You need to um, be sure that, that, that there is a, uh, an understanding that you are collecting this for a good purpose and a good reason. And the old traditional way uh, was to give a gift. And that meant something of your energy given back to that plant that's going to be uh, collected and will not be there to reproduce. But you want its energy to remain in that plant to do the healing. Look at this and so picture. you give a strand of hair or um, a fingernail or something, if you have nothing else with you. Generally it's, it's recommended you carry sage with you, which is a very uh, um, powerful plant in sage or tobacco, and that you give that as a gift to the Ottawahi, the spirit of that plant or tree that you're collecting for medicine and you you explain what it's to be used for that it's going to be giving something up in a good way uh, for healing purposes and you give something back there has to be that exchange of energy uh, for it to work properly a lifelong thing with me that uh, uh, I found out very early on that there's wonderful flavors in the forest that you can't buy in a grocery store and so every place that I've ever lived I have asked the local people there uh, whether they were from an indigenous culture of Native Americans or just the homesteaders and uh, even in the foreign countries where I've lived and, and asked what were the spices outside the kitchen door that they used to make the foods taste good and, and I'm still doing it. I've been teaching actually classes on it for about 30 years now. What do you got there Isla? This is a poster that was made from the uh, illustration in the article for Our State Magazine. Oh, cool. And I just sent him pictures to illustrate the article with on, the, on wildflowers and, and gourmet grazing and my life as a wildcraft or forager. And then this is what turned up. <laughs> so it's a real eye catcher. It's a workshops and exhibits that I do and this sits on my exhibit table. That's Everybody so cool. Everybody notices the, the dandelions. And I was delighted that they put the pictures in a field of dandelions. I just yeah, because I've got my dandelion T-shirt on. Woohoo! <laughs> and the can't earrings. Beat them, eat them. Right. And the <laughs> earrings to boot. And the dandelion earrings. And you've been of going course. crazy with dandelions lately, haven't you? You've been oh, making a lot of stuff. Yes. What have you been making? I've got dandelion wine that's Ooh. making as we speak. Ooh. It'll be ready in about four weeks. <laughs> but we won't drink it till winter. It's like summer in a bottle, and it's mm. wonderful in cold mm. winter nights to have a little mm. glass of golden dandelion wine oh, wow. and I've made dandelion jelly mm -hmm. lots of jars of the jelly uh -huh. and it's, it's also like summer in a jar it's, <laughs> it's a great color on your breakfast biscuits but oh. uh, and the greens we're getting ready to use a lot of those in dandelion pizza sandwiches and mm. all kinds of good dishes oh so it's a good spring goodies good spring, goodies right good spring goodies are that's right. our personal ugonos in our family right. our sweet greens <laughs> it's our dandelions all right well thank you isla it's been fun thank you cousin <laughs> it's good to be with family Absolutely. everybody have a great spring and eat your wild greens <laughs>